Viking Preparedness. I am Pastor Joe Fox. Back around March, I think it was March, <clears throat> I recommended, I encouraged you to keep a list. Almost dropped my shofar. Keep a list of uh, all the things you were going out and panic buying and things you were doing, things you were feeling stress about vis-a-vis uh, -vis this Wuhan, you know, sickness that was coming about. Things like, oh, there's no more toilet paper and we can't get any or whatever. Can you hear my dogs? I almost didn't do this video because what I don't want you to do is take this video and immediately default to buying stuff. Because I just talked about buying toilet paper. I want you to, I'm not telling you not to buy stuff and you'll see, uh, but I, I need you to take it bigger. But I need some of this first. I told the Shofarians at Shabbat services that now there's a breather now. And whether you believe that this COVID thing is real and requires precautions or not, doesn't matter. Okay? That's the first thing. Doesn't matter what you think. Doesn't matter what I think. What matters is what is. And what is, is I think we're going into a second wave. Whether it's a real wave, perceived wave, fake wave, we're going into a second wave. And with that will come, excuse me, more lockdown, more panic buying, more authoritarian declarations. And again, it doesn't matter what you think about it. It matters how it's going to affect your life. And therefore, what can you do now? And right now we have breathing room. There are people out and about. They've raised their heads. They're looking around. They're venturing forth. I've been venturing forth the whole time. That's not my point. Now is the time to get ready for phase two. That's over here. I appreciate the outpouring of support y'all gave me last week or about a week ago. Uh, thank you. And yes, there are more than 50 of you. Awesome. That makes me happy. I, uh, whoa. I do sometimes get a little melancholy or morose at the burden of responsibility I take on for y'all. I don't owe you nothing. Well, I owe you a video <laughs> most days. <laughs> you know, that. But as far as doing this, I don't know you. Um, and yet I feel a deep <sighs> burden, responsibility, whatever. Uh, to motivate you, right? To do better. To get ready for what's coming. Man, I tell you, I feel it coming. I feel it coming. And I want you ready for it. And I don't think we have much time. And I'm not going to go there in my head again. Um, but I'm sounding the shofar, Vikings. You need to get ready for what's coming. You need No, you need to be ready for what's coming. And what I think is coming is beyond what the vast majority of people imagine. Contemplate the unthinkable. I think it's going to be medieval. I think it could be. And if it is and you're ready, then you can do okay. And if it's not, you won't. I 
think time is very, very short. And I think you need to get ready. And again, it's not just buying stuff. It's doing the things. I do know I motivate a lot of y'all. And that, that's good. That fuels me, right? That feeds me to keep going. That's good. And I appreciated your comments to that effect uh, recently. So thank you for that. But before, I haven't heard this question uh, from the Vikings for a long time, but in the early days of Patreon, I used to get from people, what's your plan when the internet goes down? We need our Pastor Joe fix. Maybe because of people who asked that I answered them in a video. Uh, <laughs> You go hungry, bow, bow, bow. There won't be one. There's a time coming when you're not going to be able to use the internet. I don't think it's going to go away. Uh, I think the internet, if anything else, will get more, mo better. Um, it'll get more uh, technologically advanced. But I can see how people like us will be denied the use of it for a variety of reasons. To deny the voice on it. Won't be able to speak. You'll be able to see what they want you to see on it. You'll be able to see the two witnesses lying in the street, for those of you who know what I'm talking about. Um, but there's a time coming quickly when certain voices are going to be shut down. Many voices. You will only get what they want you to hear. In World War II, we used to drop radios behind enemy lines, and after World War II, actually, uh, that were preset and only had one frequency. That hornet's coming in here. And uh, so I'm going to watch it instead of you, because I hate hornets. I hit it with my mighty shofar. And, uh, hold on a second. There we go. harder than I thought. Um, we would drop radios behind enemy lines and they only had one frequency and then we would talk on that and put out the messages we wanted the people to hear. Yeah, that's kind of what you get on mainstream media already and they don't like real voices so time's coming. The time is coming when you will not be able to uh, or it won't be smart to Go to your big church to hear the word of the Lord. You won't be able to. The time is coming when you won't be able to organize on here a Viking get-together, a group meetup. Go to it, whether that's in person at the kiosk, at the the, the you know, the picnic shelter at the park, or it's online at Zoom or whatever. Uh, the time is coming when you're not going to be able to do that. And so what do you need to do? Because I'm all about self-sufficiency, right? I want you to be all about self-sufficiency, self-reliance. You need to make hay while the sun shines, and you need to meet people now in the flesh and blood. Been beating that drum forever. You need to get with people. You need to make friends in the meat world. M-E-A-T. Acquaintances. Allies. You need to spend the time. It takes time. It takes making yourself a little bit vulnerable to other people. It's a give and take. It's a relationship. It's a courtship. It's a seduction in a lot of ways. You got to do that. We have lost, as a society, a worldwide society, a lot of our humanity, a lot of our people skills that once we had. Man, I don't want to knock the camera over. <laughs> We're doing the little dance with the hornet. I'm coming out here. It's not raining. I thought it was going to rain. We've lost that. You need to work on that. 
so that when you are forbidden or the security situation is such that you can't go to your church. Uh, first of all, I don't think we were ever intended to meet in multi-hundred people churches anyway. Um, but when you can't gather with like-minded people for whatever reason, you'll still have your core that'll fit in your living room. It's what it's going to come down to. You're going to need peeps. And the time to decide who those peeps are, the time to find those people to figure that out is now. So see, it's not just getting ready for another wave of COVID. I think there's a lot coming on the heels of that COVID. I really do. And most people, I won't say most Vikings, most people will handle it badly. And it, the situation, will overwhelm them. And overwhelmed people, people without hope, people in fear, people with too much input coming in, OODA loop, are easy to lead. And so if one was of a mind, one could induce those situations, those conditions, in order to lead the sheep who will go back and follow right along. That's why you need to be self-reliant. That's why you need to be self-sufficient. So you don't need to do that. But I'm telling you, self-reliance, self-sufficiency, you're going to need other people. Whether it's your extended family, what I call the bonanza model, or it's your mag, your crew, your neighbors, uh, people you met at a biking meetup and you all decide when this thing goes down, we're all coming to my farm. You guys can build cabins out there now if you want. Whatever. A lot of ways to make this work. But I blew the shofar for a reason, people. It's coming. And I always tell people when they're getting ready to move, whether they're getting ready to move here to Shofar Mountain, or if they're getting ready to move from here, somewhere else, excuse me. And I learned this in the military because the military started doing a whole lot of stuff with stress management towards the end of my career. They actually cared. And did you know that moving I live here, I'm going here, is one of, in the chart of stressful things in life, is one of the most stressful things we do. It's horribly stressful. And do you know when we're stressed, we take it out on those closest to us because we're most comfortable with them? If I met you for the first time and I'm sitting in your living room or you're sitting in my living room or whatever, we're sitting at a park somewhere, Chances are pretty high that neither one of us is just going to get all emotional and rah, 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 and just let go. But we do that to the ones we love. And stressful times are coming. And so I'm exhorting you, encouraging you. Be cool. To those closest to you. Be cool. Sister Kate and I actually talk about this like face to face. This is a stressful period. We both need to be on guard for negative reactions. And we do. And it fortifies us and it gets us ready for what's coming. Well, I'm telling you, we got stress coming like you've never seen before in your life and people are going to crack and fall apart and strike out at each other. Some of y'all can't handle the stress that's just bubbling right now, the way you act here. Oh, I know, right? And I'm not real. <laughs> you know, the vast majority of you have never met me. You don't know me, right? I mean, and, and vice versa. And the same thing with the people that y'all yell at. 
So stressful times are coming, real times are coming, you know, times such as these. It's going to be an awesome period to live through. I'm looking forward to it for that aspect. As far as a world history, seeing the changes that are coming, we're living it. I'm not looking forward to it in the pain that I think is going to occur because of it. And that's why I do this. That's what motivates me to do this, is to get you guys ready. So if you needed another little kick in the pants, uh, I don't think we have super long. I hope I'm wrong. You know, I've done videos before like this where the I believe it's the spirit telling me to get people going. I was thinking about that recently. One, I could just be flat out wrong, right? Could be I had a bad day and then I feel like, oh, this, that, and the other thing. And so I do a video saying, you know, hey, uh, y'all need to get ready. Could be that. But you know what I think it is? I think it's some people needed the push early in order to get set up, or some people the father knew was gonna need a prod, a push, a kick, a dun 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 dun, dun until they finally acted. And so I started. So, whatever. I don't think we have much time. How long do we have, Pastor Joe? Not enough time. Don't look for a date. And then say, okay, I have till then to get ready. No, you don't. This whole thing could go up within 72 hours and be a different world. At any given time, within 72 hours, we could be living in an entirely different world. Are you ready for that? Well, no, I'm still doing my job so that I can pay off my kids' college loans and I can... It's like a little silkworm. <laughs> um, you know, do the things. I don't think you have much time. Somebody just asked me the other day, I can get, I can work two and a half more years and get my pension in a city. What should I do? Whatever the father tells you to do. Um, I can't tell you what I recommended without getting too specific. Um, You do have to have two plans working simultaneously. Two courses of action that you are pursuing simultaneously. You got to have the one that I just talked about. Where this whole house of cards falls down and falls apart and things get medieval. You got to have that course of action that you're working on. You also have to have a course of action that everything basically, generally, goes along uh, like it has been and continues to go along. Somebody asked me here recently, you know, should I run up my credit cards uh, right before an event? Well, good luck predicting that event. Um, no, you shouldn't. You should have a plan for everything to return back to kind of normal. And now you're stuck with, you know, $10,000 of credit card debt. That would be a bad move. And so, yeah, you got to pursue the idea that you're going to be an old man or an old woman um, 20 years from now, 40 years from now. I don't know how old you are. 60 years from now. You got to pursue that plan. And simultaneously, you got to pursue the plan that this whole thing falls apart this fall. Do the best you can with what you got, where you're at, and I may see some of you out there.